Good evening and welcome to the Fantasy Formula One Podcast. I'm your host, Paul, and tonight we're going to be discussing the points per million statistic. And uh, for anybody uninitiated, the points per million is the great equalizer. It's the, it's the stat that we can use to treat all drivers equal, and it kind of balances things out, um, especially when it comes to the price cap and how, how much money each driver is worth and, and stuff like that. So... If you know a lot about statistics and you're very comfortable with the points per million uh, aspect of Fantasy Formula One, then go ahead and skip on to the next podcast. Uh, this will just be a review for you, so you don't need to listen to it. But if, unless, if you're not a math magician and you want to know the math behind how we get the uh, points per million stat, then go ahead and, and hang out. So the points per million, it is a way to judge a driver's value uh, taking into account the money aspect of it. Because, again, if you look at previous podcasts, the the thing that makes Fantasy Formula 1 unique among most fantasy sports is that there is a price cap. Each, at least in the 2023 season, each uh, team had a $100 million price cap. Again, don't worry about the million. It could be pennies. It could be dollars. It could be whatever. It doesn't matter. It could be potato chips. But it's a hundred million, a uh, hundred million units, or a hundred units. Now, you'll have some drivers that, again, for this example, I like to use round numbers just so we get it. So, you'll have some drivers that might be worth twenty units or twenty million, and other drivers that might be worth five million. Well, how do you know which is a better value? Because you, if you're going to spend twenty units or twenty million dollars on a driver. Well, that's five. That's what twenty percent of your budget, right? You have a hundred units, and you spend twenty of them on one driver. That's twenty percent. So you better get a lot of points for that. And if you have another driver that's only five percent, or you know, five million units or five units, uh, then then you can expect you probably won't expect as many points, but you still want to get something back. And the way we kind of figure all this out is by assigning a points per million. Uh, aspect to each driver or value to each driver and it's really it's not too it's not too crazy so let's say you take um a driver and you can do this with any sport okay it's like like it's very common with let's say basketball or any any sport where you have points and multiple games and you get points so if in a game you have you get 50 points total of over 10 games right so you've played 10 games and you have 50 points. Some games you got more, some games you got less, but at the end of 10 games, you have 50 points. Well, then to figure out your average points per rate, per game, per event, per race, you take your 50 and divide it by the number of races or games or whatever that you played. Well, because I like my own numbers for this example, 50 divided by 50 points divided by 10 games gives you five. So if you could take your 50 points and you had 10 little buckets, you would put five points in each bucket to get that, uh, that even number across all your games. And now, and this is good and this is bad, right? Because it does take into account when we look at a driver, like, okay, cool. On average, they get five points a game. Well, they might not though. Some games, you know, if, if I come in and I'm, I get one point this game, and I get nine points this game, well, yeah, if I keep getting one and then nine, then one and then nine, at the end of 10 games, I'm going to have 50. But it doesn't tell you if, like, it's a huge gamble to have me on your team because I might get do horribly or I might do really well. Like, you just don't know. So th- this points per million doesn't tell the whole story, and that'll be the uh, cru- that's a crux of some of the info we're going to be getting into later. But... Um, so, but for the math part of it, again, I, I digress a lot, but for the math part of it, you have your 50 points over 10 races, 50 points divided by 50 divided by 10 gives you five points per race. Then you go and do it again and divide it by the number of millions or your value of your driver in millions. So I have my little notes here to make sure I don't goof up my example. So now that you have five points per race divided by $5 million value or $20 million value or whatever, that gives you, again, for this example, you have five points per race divided by $5 million. That's five over five or one over one or one, which gives you one 
uh, point per million dollars that you spend. So why is this good and why is this important? Well, as soon as you have a, a driver valued at $5 million who only brings in five, five points a race, PPM, well, they're going to be valued at one. And as soon as you have a driver that's worth $20 million, well, then they need to be bringing in 20 points a race to have the same points per million average. So it's not to say that you still don't want those higher value uh, drivers, those higher value teams on your team. But what it means is you can have somebody who is relatively inexpensive and still brings in, you know, a solid points per million. And there's still somebody you want to have on your team. Where this does fail you is uh, there's a couple of statistical anomalies. One of them is called regression towards the mean. Fancy word to say that eventually the, it always averages out. All right. And you see this in the uh, in the race results from last year. They're saying that. Uh, so here's an example. If I if I race a hundred races or I play a hundred games, then eventually my average will be let's say five points a game, like we're saying. Well, then if I if I on my hundred and first game, if I do really well, or if I on my hundred and first game I do really poor, my average won't change. Because the there's so many samples, there's so many games in the in the in the, in the set that we're we're averaging out that the waves kind of level out, and whether you do well or whether you do bad, it really doesn't change your numbers. And you see this towards the end of the race, especially for like drivers like Max Verstappen, where as soon as they do really well, as soon as they do really poor, it doesn't change your points per million value much, right? Um, and so that's regression to the mean. And this whole topic of regression to the mean is one of the reasons I got into this podcast in the first place. And that's because Fantasy F1, they didn't change their algorithm. So the stats they were putting on the website were incorrect when it came to certain drivers. And I'll go into that in a second. Actually, you know what? Forget it. We're going to go into it now. So the, and I'm not saying they don't know how to do math. I'm saying that they didn't change their algorithm. In preparation for doing this podcast, really in preparation for next year, I started taking their race results and started creating my own equations to come up and mimic their stats that they were putting out on their website based off of the pure race results. All right. In doing so, in doing that, I realized that I was getting much different numbers. I couldn't replicate, or let's say, I as soon as I started replicating numbers like Max Verstappen and, and Sergio Perez and all this, I was getting the right numbers. When it came to th a few drivers in particular, I was not getting the right numbers. And let me pull up that spreadsheet. Where did it go? Here it goes. I wasn't getting the right numbers. Okay, my computer. There we go. And the reason why... So, uh, for example, let, let's go to this. So, Daniel Ricciardo... If you look on the Fantasy Formula One website, let me find him. Where'd he go? Daniel Ricardo, right there. Okay. So on the Fantasy Formula One website, at the end of the season, they had him at a 0 0.4 PPM. So 0 0.4 points per million dollars spent. He was a very uh, inex he was a very cheap driver. The end of his year cost is uh, Due to do 5.5 million, which means he had gone up. He started, I think, 4.5, but he was doing pretty well. He ended at 5.5. Fine. So do all of that math, and uh, it didn't line up. And the reason why is, I believe, F1 had the exact same algorithm for all the drivers, meaning they take all the drivers' total points, divide it by whatever round of race they're doing. So come time for round 22 and 23, they were dividing all the drivers by 22 and 23 in that first step, which is inaccurate because Daniel Ricciardo only drove like, what, four races. And we'll get into him specifically in a minute. But what it meant was at the very end of the year, the uh, Fantasy Formula One website had him at a uh, 0 0.4 points per million when, if you only use the math for the races that he was in, he had a 1.27 points 
points per million. Yes, Daniel Ricardo was just as valuable as Sergio Perez points per million. He was getting less points, but he also cost substantially less points. He was just as valuable as Sergio Perez at the end of the year. By the numbers, all right? Um, another person that that happened to was, do, 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 who was it? Um, sorry, I'm going through my, was Liam Lawson, right? Liam Lawson had a 0 0.16 points per million by the time he was out of the, out of the driver's seat. But if you don't, if in the math, you don't use all the races for the season, you only use the races he was driving in. He actually had a 0 0.71 points per million, which is a really solid middle of the pack driver. And this is the part where it kind of, where the stats might lead astray a little bit is Nick DeVries. He had a 0 0.2 points per million on the official website. He really had a 0 0.44, but you still should not have Nick DeVries on your team. He was crashing out way too much. And we'll get into that. He had points being made, but he was also getting huge deductions for crashing out. And um, so I'm not saying that just, I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm not saying the conclusions are wrong, but this is an example. Nick DeVries is an example of, well, even if he's doing twice as good as they say he's doing, you still shouldn't put him on your team. Fine driver. They have their internal politics. Fine. But he's not getting you the points you need when somebody like uh, Daniel Ricardo or Liam Lawson, you should absolutely have on your team because they are pulling in. They're pulling in fewer points, but they're pulling in fewer points, yes. But because they only cost five million, they're much. They're just as good an investment as you know uh, Sergio Perez's. And so that brings us into uh, the next thing. So I, I, I ran my own stats. I ran my own numbers. Like I said, however, um, one of the things you have to look at is, like I said, with regression towards the mean. After you get five, ten, fifteen races in. Whether a driver does good or a driver does poor, it's not going to change their points per million value much. And especially if the uh, Formula One, fancy Formula One people don't change their algorithms like they do. If they apply the same algorithm to everybody, as soon as you have drivers missing races, so you have replacement drivers come in, a replacement driver could come in and score two points. Well, if he costs, let's say, let's say, let's say, how about this? Let's do an example, right? Halfway, 10 races into the season, you have like a Daniel Ricciardo, you have somebody come in. They race run one race, right? Fine. And let's say they get five points, right? They get points for overtaking. They, you know, they start 20th, they finish 15th, they get five points. Fine. Well, be, the, the way the stats are on the website or the way the algorithms work on the Fantasy Formula on a website, they're going to take all 10 races and divide his five points, total of five points by all 10 races and give him a not good PPM. However, those five points need to be divided by one race. Because that's the only race he's ever done, and so at the end of their first race, he should have five points. If he has, if he comes in at five million, five points, he should be at a one point ppm. And again, I'm talking about the statistical anomalies. the The other edge of this is that at after the end of the first race, it's you have a sample size of one, right? As soon as, uh, as soon as somebody like Max Verstappen, who's like what thirty million dollars. He comes into the race and he gets 30 points. Well, fine. But that's only one sample, right? So when when does all this matter? And what the point I'm trying to get to is when does all this matter, right? Well, I think you can't look at just the sample for the entire year. You have to look at smaller samples too. So I personally look at the five race average and the three race average. That paints an accurate picture because it helps eliminate, or not eliminate, account for regression to the mean. Meaning, uh, take a, a, who are we looking for? Let's take uh, McLaren, right? The last half of last year, McLaren started doing great. But they already had plenty of races where they weren't doing great. Where um, they were crashing out, where the cars just weren't working, where whatever. So, as soon as you get, now let's, this is going to be a little crazy, but... Let's say you have a driver who crashes out, gets negative 20 for his first 10 races, all right? Well, negative 20 times 10, that's negative 200 points. You're never coming back from that, right? So this person sitting there with a negative 20 PPM, now, or sorry, negative 20 points per race, we won't worry about the value right now, but it'd probably be pretty low. So after those 10 races, let's say they change it all around. Well... Now, let's say they get 10 points, positive 10 points for their 11th race. Negative 200 
to zero, then it goes to the next one, negative 200 to positive 10. That's not enough to impact their points per million. It genuinely, truly isn't. Statistically, when you look at the sheet, they are going to be a horrible driver for the rest of the year because you can't come back from that sort of deficit. So, but, comma, as soon as you only look at the last three races, well, now he's negative 40 to positive 10. And as you keep going, as they keep getting those positive 10s and positive 10s, if you look at smaller pictures, eventually you're going to eliminate the mistakes they made months ago, and you're just going to be looking at what they're doing currently. The problem is, again, with a smaller sample size, is that it's very easy, and I'm trying to think of it, an example. Let's look at, uh, uh, who am I thinking about? Um, well, let's say you have a great, like Sergio Perez, right? In his home race in Mexico, he crashes out, turn one, lap one. Well, if you're only worried about the three races, like in the, in the past, well, he had one, he crashed out a third of the races. Well, no, he didn't. All right. Those are extenuating circumstances. We're going to get into turn one, lap one uh, DNFs here in a later episode. But you can't really hold that against him. But some drivers, you can. If it start, you know, and so it just kind of depends on, on, what you're, on what you're looking for. But the, to, to summarize, the points per million as they have it here, it's fine. But it doesn't tell the whole story. The algorithm they used last year is flawed. And it's, it doesn't account for people doing well when the previous season, the previous first half of the season, say, for this example, is weighting them down. But it also doesn't help for people like uh, Austin Martin last year. They were doing great. They were doing wonderful. And then they couldn't get it together to save him the last half of the year. It hails both Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso as being some of the best valued players for the entire year. Well, no, not if you look at the last half of the season. They absolutely were not. They did so well in the first half. They could start taking attrition in the second half and still do well. And still do well statistically. But shoot, if you had Fernando Alonso on your team like during the, that gap when they weren't doing well, you know, just like if you had McLaren on your team when they weren't doing well at the beginning of the season, you shouldn't do it. But then as soon as you look and see them start trending one direction or trending another, you can go ahead and get on that power band early or hop off the power band early and not make the mistake I made, you know, hanging out with drivers that you shouldn't in the race four and, you know, suffering the consequences after that. Um, so, talk, so we are going to be looking at, to sum up, we're going to be looking at my own algorithms that take into account the number of races that drivers actually race. And, 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 and FIA's defense, like I'm, I'm not condemning them or condemning their math. I promise there was no one behind this math. They came up with the equation to and applied it to all the drivers who would have thought that there was going to be drivers in, drivers out, drivers off, drivers in, whatever. And they just didn't adjust it because it'd probably be way too much or they just didn't think to. Which is why you have people like me who geek out and enjoy watching and enjoy doing math. And I will say that about uh, this entire process. For all you kids out there who think, man, I'm never going to use math again. Once I get out of the, you know, once I get out of school, who's ever going to use statistics or whatever? Well, I, and I believe that. I got C's in calculus and calculus-based phys physics. But I was able to come up with these equations to do stats for F1. You never know when it's going to be uh, going to be a huge use for you. Um, so for going forward, as we get into all these driver bios, I just want to kind of shed some light about some of this math that we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing the uh, calculating our own PPMs. I'm going to be adjusting some of them because uh, some of their algorithms are wrong. We're going to be looking at three race averages. We're going to be looking at five race averages. So we're finally out of the math. We're going to go ahead and start digging into the uh, racer bios. Cheers. <laughs>